Okay, Roger Mud Fossil University just blocked by YouTube for having a uh, copyrighted um, segment in my video uh, from the Science Channel. And um, they did a story about dark energy, and I was commenting on it because it were, I had serious things to comment about. Under the Fair Use Act, I'm supposed to be able to do that and not supposed to be able to block it because I'm not trying to monetize it. I'm not trying to make any money. But, so be it. Now, I sent to all the people in that video that, hello my friend, I have a series of photos. The blue is a particle spinning right, drifting left, light chaos, light single disc, light sutra venturi, light circle, rainbow shower, excited. And here's all the drifting particle, chaos at the slit, single wave unmolested, single wave through a venturi accelerated, the spinning nature of light, boson particles, bo I mean Higgs fields with the surrounded by um, polarized particles. Now, we're, I'm going to go into the video, but uh, like I say, they have no clue about dark energy, dark matter. They're all trying to figure out what it is, and, and, and that's why I wanted to show what they were saying. We just have no clue. We don't have any idea they're saying. Well, I'm showing what it is. And dark energy and dark matter, very, very simple. Okay, my friends, there's a little mind game for you. There's Latham's Crazy Machines, incredible tractor beam magnet. Now, what does that mean? This is a negative and a positive which has an excessive negative but a strong positive. And here's what will happen. The strong positive will attract this negative magnet. The negative excessiveness of this will repel that magnet and it will stay at a quantum distance and be strongly held exactly like the electrons in orbitals. Now here it goes, just watch what it does. Boom, there it goes. All right, so now, what he's demonstrating now is a atom at rest. So, the nucleus is here, holding one electron at this point, let's call it a hydrogen, at bay. And he'll shake it and it'll jiggle around. And when he jiggles it around, that is going to be called heat. Jiggle, 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 that thing will try to break away, but it can't, and it's pulling, and it's shaking, and that is a little bit of heat. And if he shakes it so hard that it breaks free, that is light, or electricity. It's a, it's a conduction of that electron into some other medium, whether it's air, or whether it's into conduction through a wire or whatnot. So here's, I'm just going to play it through. It's very cool. And you will see exactly what I'm saying. You'll see it shake, that's heat. You'll see it escape, that's light. And see how firmly it's held there? Now that's heat. That's heat. It says, get me out of here. Let me get out of here. I can't go. I'm holding you tight. And they're fighting each other. And all of a sudden, it'll take off, and that's what you call light. There it goes. That was light. Now let's go back to this. What, what is the structure of this thing going on here? We have a positive that is so overwhelmed by negatives that it becomes basically neutral with a certain exact amount of repulsion to more incoming negatives because it's got all the negatives it wants. That is what happens inside of the nucleus of atoms. They are flooded by electrons. So whatever protons are in here are literally crushed into a snowball of electrons and inside is several marbles, let's call them, of protons. Then 
it becomes excessively negative and the additional electrons that want in against these positives which is this say no 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 you have to stay out there because we have all the ones we want and you stay exactly out there because we have seven we have six protons so we have all six quantity amounts of opposite charge electrons holding us tight crushing against us just exactly the way a magnet would and then it's at that point it says that's all we can take we can't take anymore this says, yeah but I want to get in there and he said well you can't come in here we got a, all we want we got a little excessive amount of negative already we can't take you and the guy said well what should I do he said you stay there and he says, all right, well, there's six of us in here. What if some more of these guys come? He said, will you tell them to line up around these orbitals in these circles? That is the atomic structure. That is why quantum works. This is the demonstration of that. All right, let's take it another step further. You saw that as you shook it, that thing went flying away. Well, that thing is going to try to get to another one of these. Somewhere it's going to try to hit something to get into position to snuggle up to a proton you know the nucleus so how is that going to happen it's going to come flying through here and smash into this and say get out of here I'm taking over and it says whoa 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 I'm not getting out of here and it bounces off and that is light this one will go bip bip and you'll get a little jiggle in here and you'll get a little heat or whatever it is and it bounces the guy away and that's light and it'll only bounce it from a certain distance of the orbitals and that is is why we see it in the visible frequency it's an extremely elegant system unbelievably elegant and it, it keeps away microwaves our, our our atmosphere does not allow microwaves in because they hurt us and i'm not sure about this 5g because that's in the microwave range and that affects water so i would look in it a little deeper anyway this is 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 um is quite obvious what happens an electron comes in smashes into that and bounces off as light bounces this as heat and that's what happens i understand light extremely well this is a pulsed red laser crashing through the air similar to a sonic boom of an airplane and exciting the molecules in the air which are polarized now because of the energy field given off by this charged particles flowing through air just exactly the same thing as happens inside of a wire that same charged field is now being sucked into a venturi which is two round metal drums they create two airplane wings it gets forced to crash itself into itself. What's happening here is these charged particles, which you can see little tiny dots here and there, there's a zillion of them. Once they get forced into each other's regions, they display. What are they displaying? They're displaying energy, they're displaying chaos, they're displaying a fight and, and pushing each other around and forcing each other into creating a big magnetic field. Now that's all I can tell you. I see what I see. And I don't understand 100% what is the mechanism that creates that magnetic field. But I do know that it's the interaction between the crushing of themselves into each other's fields creates this huge reverse EMF, of electromotive force, into the airwaves, into the ether. Which the polarized ether is in the airwaves. They've always spoken of it in history, and it is these little dots you see that 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 means they're plus minus plus minus plus minus minus and what's being plus and minus here is the the atoms and the molecules that are floating in the air primarily um moisture molecules because they're highly polar so we've got accelerated light crashing through a venturi coming out the other side as plasma everybody's in each other's business they're crushed into each other's thing trying to force each other away and as they come out they just explode out of there they start to step down back to their original red energy slowly and these are the filaments that come through these are the charged particles they call them the 
charge particle carriers and they will carry a field with them and I will show you that next. Coming at us from the slit you'll notice these little tiny filaments are headed by these charged particles I mean charged fields. The particle is so tiny that I'm, I'm sure it's impo impossible to see but it's in the center of these fields so the particle is the charged particle carrier at the head of it are these fields and those are what they call the Higgs fields so this is the boson and that's the Higgs field that's all I can tell you and, they are, and then this is the Cherenkov radiation and the electron neutrinos cause this and uh, it's, it's all been they're asking for all these things and I'm showing all these things these little dots in these circles are the polarized particles that are literally in the air, the molecules in the air that are being polarized into these patterns, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, all around that charged particle. That's what you're seeing. This is an extremely excited particle and that extremely excited particle is going to crash into one of these standard particles and it will create a mini particle and that is of extreme interest. Okay this is the uh, highly charged particle or highly accelerated particle that was shown before in that cloud of, um, of disks and these are the fields that are that carried by the particle. Okay, Now this one here is slamming into this. Now is it a bigger particle than the particle that's here or is it just highly, more highly accelerated? Is it spinning faster than this one? I don't know exactly. But I can tell that something bled off after the two fields interacted and this now is stepping down to create its own similar field to that and I don't know, you know, all I can see is what you see. So, is that maybe a lepton? I have no clue. It's a particle, or actually a part of a particle, because these are supposed to be the smallest particles that exist. The electrons, or electron neutrinos, or the leptons, which are parts of, of electrons. I'm not sure even how they categorize these things anymore. They have so many different things they try to make up to, to cover the fact that it's just totally wrong. <laughs> All right, it's electron vortex theory. These spin. The electrons comes forward spinning. You can see the spin. Now, what happens to when it hits the slit? It either comes over the top and goes to this direction. Now, one might here, 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 here. So there's going to be some here, some here, some here, some here, and they collect in these bars. What if it hits on the bottom coming this way? It goes to this side. It's as simple as that. Most of it's going to be in the middle, and then the intensity is going to dim out because the, these are going to be more on the edges. It's just the nature of, of the spinning forward particle, which they think is a wave. Well, it, it's a wave, and it is a particle, so everybody's right. How's that? All right, this is a magnetic field surrounding the flow of electricity, the direction of the current is this way, the field sets up and spins around it, just exactly what I showed. That's called the right hand rule. It's going this way, it spins this way. Alright, now, the wave though is not, it's not a, a, a wave like this of a big flappy wave of nothing, it's a particle. And the particle is the head of this disk of this structure. It spins just like this. Just the way that's spinning. Spin, 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 spin. As it does, the tip is the particle. That creates the field around it. So the field moves with the particle. Now, what else happens? If this is very tight together here, that's a, a, a extremely high frequency, a lot of waves. And when you look at it, these are waves. And if there's a lot of waves, it's spinning like crazy. If it's spinning like crazy, there's a lot of angular momentum, just like spinning a bucket of water. The faster it spins, the harder it will impact when it hits something. They all go the same distance at the same time, but some of them are spinning like crazy, 
and some of them are just lazy old things just sort of floating through the space. That is the difference. The frequency of spin determines the amount of impact this particle will have when it reaches something to impact with. That's what energy is. The frequency of spin determines the mass, which is the energy. So energy equals mass. And mass equals the resting amount of weight of this particle times a series of equations which take account for this forward speed and then the angular momentum. That's the entire story of light and energy and dark matter and dark energy. And once you take into account and step backwards from, from Einstein, you just saw you can accelerate light. I mean, anybody says that that's not accelerated light. I don't know how, how they could come to that conclusion. Uh, so it, it, once you get beyond that, you have to go to a place where you, you talk about neutrons. Because neutrons do not exist. Once you remove those and you go into my electron flood theory, which means that electrons completely flood and crush into the protons, which is exactly what negative particles would do to positive particles, until that mass reaches a neutral state, basically, and then the additional electrons that are trying to flood in are held at bay in their orbitals. That means there's no neutrons, and that solves every single thing in physics. Take away the neutrons, take away the speed of light, back away from these things, understand that light spins. And I think I showed this, but I will show it again, just so you understand the spinning nature of light. I sent all my theories and my photographs of the light experiments we did, accelerating light and the Higgs boson and the charged particle carriers and the Higgs fields and the uh, little even, I think we might even see leptons charged particle ether all shown and I, I can't understand how they can think that this thing the Sun shoots out something which is nothing and then when it gets here it becomes energy it's energy here and it's matter here it's a spinning electron it spins towards the earth when it impacts with the earth it displays they're all negatives primarily they stay away from each other that's your dark energy that's your dark matter all right, everyone on that show that was um, talking about the um, dark matter, I sent them emails and, and information as far as I can send to them, and I'm hope, hoping for a response. I'll be posting more about it. But they, all I heard was, oh, we're really looking hard. We're doing this. We look, and we're just searching every way. Well, I have some evidence to offer, and, and uh, I think just as a, a general, normal investigative response uh, they would ask some questions or make some comments or disagree or agree but to just completely ignore it and continue on without examining the possibility that neutrons do not exist is is a very flawed way of, of, of going forward in science so the Emperor has no clothes neutrons do not exist mud fossil University Citadel of Truth, Home of Reality.